And so I have, I've just like, the, the questions are in sequence, but they are not, I've not uh, done every question. Um, okay. So one example from the first part of the chapter is, you know, yeah. use appropriate lubricate function to parse each of the following dates. I thought this was fairly straightforward. Um, so you just have to look at uh, what sequence the date is in. So in the format. Yeah, so month, day, Y, Y, M, D, like whatever. Um, this, uh, so even if they are, the, uh, there is a vector like this one, so it's concatenated these yes. two different dates. You have to use C function there. Yeah, yeah, so you just throw in the whole vector and the MDY still works. Yes. Um, okay, so that was, it, that was simple enough to understand. The next question was how, uh, I did was how does the distribution of flight times in the NYC flights package, flights data set, how does the distribution within a day change over the course of the year? So there are several different methods of uh, like doing this, like what does distribution of flight time means? Are you looking at start, uh, like average start time, median time, or you can just look at different things. Um, this is, and, and this is again, I've just borrowed from the solutions data set, uh, sorry, solutions book. Um, and I just tried to understand what they did there. Um, so for, yeah. Um, so please stop me at any time, okay. Um, this uh, manipulation is, uh, this uh, code is from the book. Um, so if we just look at, just recap of what the flights uh, data looks like. Uh, oops. I think so. You will have to load the web packet. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, well, I was working on it, so it's all already loaded. <laughs> um, so if we just look at the flights data, the departure time and the scheduled departure time, the times are listed in a really weird way. They are integers, but 517, yes. but what it means is 517, 533, 542. So, so we should first make that into like a understandable time format. So there is, um, and, and in, in order to do that calculate, yeah, five and 17 from this, we will use, uh, uh, we have made a function make date time um, 100 because it's like the modulus of 100 that you're taking for time. So, yes. um, so these two symbols stand. So you know that uh, this is for the integer and this is for the remainder. Um, and so that makes the date time, we use the make date time uh, function for that. And then apply this function on all the non-NA departure and arrival times. Um, so just uh, do that and then select all the times yes. that uh, variables that end with delay and end with time. So basically selecting all time variables from yes. the data set. Okay, and then what they did is, um, they looked at the departure hour and then they looked at how the departure hour changes in each month. Like what's, what is the trend of departure hour in each month? So are there more early flights or are there later flights uh, depending on yes. each month? Um, so this, this took me some time to understand because uh, I tried to look, so first they uh, calculate the variable, uh, uh, mutate departure hour, um, which is, uh, uses the departure time. And so it you ca calls the update function and it updates like Y day, day of the year equal to one. Otherwise you'll just get a funny, funny plot uh, because in the, on the Y axis, we don't um, really care for each day. Um, uh, uh, sorry, um, x-axis, we don't care for each hour. And even for the update, so I was trying to look up for the help help in this. And if I if you just do update, it doesn't show up. It just, it just shows up something. And, and even if you do look yes. at update, it doesn't show up. So actually- You have used update function in model also, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so this one, so you need to do this. 
lubricate uh, lubricate uh, three colons update POSIX T. And yeah. that will bring up this update function. And if you want to read more about this, there is the, uh, I'll just share the Stack Overflow link to the question because that was not straightforward at all. Uh, in the book, they just mention one small example of update. Um, and then departure month is just like how, how we can extract components of uh, uh, a date time components where you extract the month from the departure time and you then uh, plot a frequency um, density uh, density polyline uh, graph um, and what you have is this so this is just showing trends every month and the reason we are looking at density is because if we just look at the count for each uh, so what is showing is that in e each hour so at 12 o'clock in at midnight how many yes. um flights departed um if we just use the count then you know february will have few over because all the days don't have um, all months don't have the same amount of flights because a different number of days so that's why we are doing density instead of just count and if you look here there's it's not very clear but it seems that um what is this second and third so this one is the green one. So March maybe has lower number of early flights. Uh, so between six to eight o'clock and then, um, uh, and then has more later flights. So, you know, this curve goes that you see this green yes. yellow line here below and then above in the, so that's like a, a rough, rough trend. Um, Okay, then compare departure time, scheduled departure time and departure delay. Are they consistent? So departure time, scheduled departure. So ideally departure time should be the uh, scheduled departure time plus departure delay. Like that should be right. your final departure time. Uh, but if you try to do that, they are not um, consistent. Um, and this happens like most of the problems that in this NYC uh, flight data set happens when things get either time zone conflict or when things get pushed, times get pushed to the next day and it doesn't account for that shift in the day. Okay. Um, yeah, so, um, so make a new variable, mutate departure delay check which is equal to departure time minus schedule. So you're doing, we're doing math with the dates, um, with the time, departure time, minus schedule departure time, um, and D minutes. So remember there were three kind of, um, um, three kinds of yes, classes. Yeah. Were also yeah, so periods, intervals, and durations. And D, uh, duration is D, D minutes, D uh, hour, and duration yes. gives you number of seconds in that duration. The output is always seconds. So you're just dividing by 60 seconds um, to see per minute time. And then um, make uh, two uh, more variables. Same is just a logical um, variable that gives true or false dep depending on whether departure delay is equal to the um, this new variable that we made, delay check and um, difference. So what is the actual difference uh, between the two? Uh, because not that's what we are looking for. And then, uh, and then we just like filter and just look at that data set where the absolute difference is not zero. So it's greater than zero. So if we look at that, this is still quite a big uh, data set. So 1200 rows. And let's see, this is departure time so here is the departure delay check variable um so they are not same they are all false and we can see this uh, there is this difference so yeah um if, so if we go back where like look at the scheduled departure time for all of these thing to notice is that they are all in the evening or the night and yeah. then 
when you are add the delay to it they are pushing like delay is 8:51 minutes 36 minutes so it just gets pushed to the next day and then that is not um, accounted for um, yes. uh, in our calculation so that's why the inconsistency occurs um, so can you fix it? Uh, can, uh, were you able to do this in clock and was there a better solution? No, I haven't done this exercise. Actually, I tried the earlier exercises like okay, parsing okay. the case or creating. Oh, great, great. great. I could not yeah. create the helper function only. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. Um, oh, that, that's okay. So then we can look at exercises that I have not done. So that's super useful. Then uh, next is compare air time, which is air time, which is a uh, flight is in the air with the duration between the departure and arrival. So logically arrival uh, minus departure should be equal to air time, uh, but is this true? So again, we try to do that uh, flight duration is equal to as numeric uh, subtract arrival time minus departure time. Um, and then, um, look at that so air so again there is air time in minutes but and there is a difference um so a, a difference of um flight duration is what we have calculated yeah flight duration is what we have calculated and air time minutes is what they've given us minutes so they are not the same and they are uh, that's probably because uh, again this they calculation are in different time zone Correct, correct, exactly. So they have not uh, accounted for time zones. So this is just like so complicated. <laughs> I'm thankful that in my work, I don't have to deal with this kind of- I don't of, have uh, to deal with date and time much. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, and therefore I'm also, that's why I'm also very less motivated to go into this rabbit hole to understand everything because if I don't use it, I'll forget it. So. Um, so just trying to understand a few things and I remember, remember a few things. Um, then there is a question of how does the average delay time change over the course of a day? So this we can kind of answer, right? Like uh, the average delay time will, we, we will expect it to increase over the course of the day because the more it kind of spills over delay from one uh, yes. to next, like it just spills it's over. It will be highest in the evening. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it says, should you use departure time or scheduled departure time? So I think we should use scheduled departure time because yes. that has the correct day uh, because as we saw, departure time can go into the next day and then it will, uh, that will screw up our results. Um, so yeah, so this is just uh, making again, scheduled departure hour. Uh, so looking at um, the hour instead of every minute. Um, and then group by that hour and uh, summarize and then plot it and so yeah just like expected yes. uh, very expected curve on what what day of the week should you leave if you want to minimize the chance of a delay so this is uh, again like look at every week um no sorry every weekday and look at the average um delay per per week um, so again, these are like similar uh, um, things that they have used. The new lo the lubricated function they've used as weekday to extract the weekday uh, from the time component. Yes. And yeah, like Saturdays, less delay. Um, then uh, next section, why is there months but no D months, duration of months? And, and that, like, if you think about it, duration will give you a definite number of seconds, but every month does not have the same length. So yes. it can't give duration months. So that's why, like, just that's some, like a trick question to remember, or if you're using intervals or uh, uh, durations, then yeah, that is just something to note. Um, and then create a vector of dates, giving the first day of every month in 2015 and then create a vector of dates giving the first day of every month in the current year. So similar question, but just um, here the 20, it's 2015 and here it is in the second question is current year. So um, um, 
vector of dates during the first day of every month. So we can specify YMD 1st January 2015 plus months. And so notice that I have 0 to 11 and not 1 to 12. Um, and we'll see what happens if I do 1 to 12. So if I do 0 to 11, then it just creates, a, so again, doing math. Um, yes. Oh yeah, it, it did the whole, both of the solutions. So just, just look at this one. Um, so now I have first, first Jan, first Feb, Feb, first March. If I do one, one to, 12. to 12, so I think you can, ex you know. Yeah, so it will add that. So now you will have, so since there is already one um, month of one, it will start yes. from second. To, to, yes. Yeah, February and then it goes on to 2016. Yeah, yeah, so. So that is the something to remember. Um, it's a, and then um, check what, um, yeah, so we did, we check, checked what happened. Um, and then if we want to do it for this year, so this year we are in May, but we, what we want is we want the first January, 2021. And so we can floor it. So I'm, so I'm using the uh, today and floor it by, if I do month, then it will be first May, but I want to floor it, floor it by year and then just add the months. So if I do that, you get this. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So right. Many that, sorry. So many nuances in this. Chapter. Yeah. Yeah, totally, totally. Like, like, it's it's those things, you know, once you understand, it's like, oh, it's so obvious, but it's not obvious when you're seeing it for the first time. Right. <laughs> yeah, so next, uh, write a function that gives your, uh, given your birthday the date, returns how old you are in years. So we will do this for my cat, who's, uh, yeah, so who is aged, who was born. I think in January sometime in 2017. So, um, so this is just, so here they are using intervals. Uh, so this is the function. Um, so the interval of years, um, how many years were there from birthday to today? And this is, this is the sign for finding the interval between two time points. So okay. from the birthday, till today and then um, because we want it in years so we have just we have included years so uh, yeah this percentage double dash percentage gives interval and percentage um, backslash gives integer division and so when you do that and i just enter like his approximate birth date it's like four years uh, okay cool. and this is the last one why can't today, so interval of today with today plus years by this, like why can't this work? So I actually ran it and it gave 12. Um, so it's not throwing up an error, um, but if we look, uh, let me just uh, stop share here and go back to the chapter. So, uh, okay, Where is yeah. so there is a table in the end, which you may have seen of what yes. math is possible. And what we were looking there is uh, trying to do, uh, Duration in month is not possible. Yeah, so we're trying to add interval to period. And if you look at interval and period here, only division is possible. So, yes. so that's that's answer. So if we run it, it gives us some number, but I guess we're supposed that to. That number is not meaningful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that, that, that's it from me. Um, I, I would love to hear what you have uh, done in clock and what uh, you've learned.
from there. I'm trying to find that file, but I think uh, once I find, I will share it on Slack directly. Oh, okay, no right. problem. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Maybe what we can do is just uh, because I, was... I, mean, I will probably store in some different uh, folder. I was doing an exercise of uh, R four DS, and okay. I focus on model because uh, that's what I have to do even in my study. I see. I see. Okay. Okay. That's uh, that's okay. Uh, I was just uh, I was just looking at the clock uh, page. Yes. And even for even... parsing, you will have to uh, specify the format. Percentage B, percentage D, uh, everything mm -hmm. you will have to specify even in the beginning exercises, like the first one you did. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I think this one was quite helpful. So I just went through this very quickly and try just looking at things that we can remember. So one was invalid dates. So it will give you invalid dates if you try to um, yes. add add stuff. So for example, in this example, imagine we want in the flights data, we want to add one month to date. Um, and yes. so with Lubridate, we can use months one. So this is the period, like um, right. during the period interval. So it's, it's adding a period of a month. So we just do date plus months. And you see some any values. And when we look at that, it's in 29 February. Yeah, so it was trying to February, which doesn't exist. So that is great. Uh, and it says that if you do this in Lubridate, it will give you a silent NA. So I guess it won't be. Um, yes. This one makes it more explicit. And then there was another one that I thought was good to remember. Was... But in clock, there is a function, uh, there is argument called invalid. Yeah, 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 that's, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, non-existent, and it will give you, so if there is a non-existent time because of daylight shift and all, um, yes. then it will flag that non-existent time due to, like, it will give you that error. So um, it basically saves you all that thinking. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I think those two. Invalid date and non-existent time. I thought that was uh, useful. Yes. Actually, this is also developed by Art Studio only. But I think mm -hmm. there's a different team, not uh, the same team working on tidy versus the case. Okay. And that's probably why uh, even on GitHub, this is offered in different library, R-Lib, not in tidy versus slash tidyverse. I see, I see. Uh, I think at least three or four teams are working in our studio from what I have experience on GitHub. Okay, uh, okay. One is tidyverse, one is tidy modeling. Uh, that is headed by Max Kuhn and Julia Sales probably. Mm -hmm. And tidyverse is headed by Hedley Wickham himself. Mm -hmm. And then there is third team which is headed by Yuhushi. Uh, he is working on R markdown in meter, oh. the presentation aspect. Yeah, yeah. And now this is the fourth team I am coming across. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah.